let's uh, let's say father we thank you for this uh, beautiful day that you've given us we thank you that um, that in christ lord you have been made unto us um, sanctification and righteousness and wisdom uh, father we thank you for your presence in our lives lord you are ever present lord always with us uh, what an awesome privilege to have the king of kings and lord of lords the, the one who's the ruler of heaven and earth uh, to be with us all the time lord we thank you that um, we have access to your presence lord um, lord we just need to turn to you turn our hearts to you and look to you and call upon your name and uh, lord you are there father we thank you for the reassurance of your of your presence of your indwelling presence we thank you for the for the power for the empowering lord of the infilling of the Holy Spirit that we experience, God, that we can call upon and we can receive, Master. We thank you, Father God. And um, even today, Lord, we, we thank you that you are with us and we commit uh, um, these sessions and the rest of the classes into your mighty hands. And we pray that you'll continue to speak to us, that you will lead us in all that you have for us, Lord. We thank you. We give you all the praise even as we commit ourselves into your mighty hands. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, just a quick recap. Um, you know, uh, I, I hope you all got to uh, answer the quiz. You know, every quiz will come with a, uh, with a expiry date or a time on it. So, you know, try to finish it within that. So. I think I extended by one more day. You know, it was supposed to be Sunday night, uh, Saturday night. I kept it open till you know Sunday night or Monday morning. Um, so, uh, so but then you know the subsequent quizzes we'll finish by the due date, right? Okay, right. Um, okay, so we've been looking at. Uh, the Holy Spirit across, uh, you know, several uh, across the Book of Acts, like in the Book of Acts, and to get an understanding, um, like how did he move? What did he do? Uh, just for us to get an understanding of, um, you know, all that the Holy Spirit um, does, and all that he does, and all that he, um, uh, and right through church history, early church history, we see the wonderful ways in which he led the supernatural ways in which uh, he intervened in people's lives, and it's it's all amazing, right? It's some some things are just so wonderful, and and we know that um, uh, you know we are living in that dispensation, right? And, and today we are living in that dispensation, so um, we can uh, you know we can believe God, do the same thing in our lives. We can uh, you know uh, we can receive from Him and also be empowered. Right by the Holy Spirit to, to do the things that um, the early church did. Um, so that's that's the greatest. Um, uh, you know, um, I think that's a, that's a great privilege for us, uh, for each one, for all of us, because we have the same Holy Spirit uh, living inside of us. We have the same Holy Spirit, uh, you know, empowering us uh, to walk, um, just like uh, you know, just like Jesus, and just like the early church walked. Right. So. Um, so that's the thing, you know. Whatever we we learn, um, uh, let's try to look for, you know, how can I apply this in my life? You know, of course, some of the things will be uh, information. Whatever we are learning, I'm not just Holy Spirit class. I'm just generally, you know, speaking about uh, uh, you know all the other courses and everything that we might be uh, looking at. Um, uh, you know, look at what what is it that I can apply? You know, some sometimes the application is just a, a alignment of thinking. Right, uh, 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 a renewing of uh, thinking to um, the truth. Okay, sometimes it's an unlearning. Hey, this is what I, I thought about God, or this is what I thought about. Uh, you know how uh, this is this is the way He looks at me. This is the way I, you know, and and that because we see in Scripture, we see a clearer picture. And uh, you know, there's an alignment. There's a, a renewing of the mind to the truth. There's an aligning of our, you know, of our way of thinking to um, to scripture, right? to truth. And uh, you know, that could be an application. And, and in some cases, you know, when, when we come again, come uh, through, when we, when we look at some of the principles and precepts, and hey, these are things that I can put to practice in my life, right? So, uh, so, so look at um, how can I apply. 
right? How can I apply this in my life? How will this change my thinking? How will this change my living, right? So um, let's look for application and, and do that, right? That is, that will make our, mean, our study uh, a lot more meaningful. Right, a lot more meaningful, and that is what we uh, that is what our responsibility is as well, right? So we not only hear the truth, but also do the truth, right? Obey the truth, right? Okay, so today, uh, last class we looked at that. We looked at we I think we finished with the Book of Acts, and we started with um, the work of the Holy Spirit in the history of the church, and particularly we're talking about uh, you know uh, right from 400 AD till uh, you know, till the present time, um, the work of the Holy Spirit, right? So um, if you look at church history, you will see that um, was, there's going to be another course, um, church history and Christian history and uh, missions. So um, that's a very interesting course again. And also, um, you know, uh, you could look at um, Another resource, uh, a book written by Pastor Ashish, Revivals, Visitations, and Moves of God. It's a you know wonderful compilation of various uh, you know work research done by various authors. Uh, it's a compilation of that work, and it's it's really wonderful, starting from uh, you know uh, starting from the early church and going all the way um, to the present day and look looking at the moves of God what is revival what is visitation and so on so so that um, so we get an understanding of what the Holy Spirit did you know how he moved in the lives of people and specifically you know today let's look at uh, um, you know in church history starting from what we call or what the historians call, call as the dark ages um, referring to church because uh, it is it had slipped into or you know turned into a very very uh, a shadow of what it was you know what we read in the book of acts we see that our wow, church is so vibrant we read about the church in um, jerusalem we read about the church in antioch we read about read about ephesus and we see all these uh, even in samaria right we see all these wonderful uh, places and outpouring of the holy spirit and and revival and and uh, and, the, and and wonderful things happening like people coming to know the lord and 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 Along with that, there we also read about uh, you know persec persecution against the church and so on. Um, so it's it's really um, difficult to understand, comprehend that hey, this a church this was so fiery and uh, vibrant uh, had slipped into uh, you know normal or uh, formal uh, a mere uh, shadow of what it was you know more into rituals um, denying the power. Um, and also, uh, we see that uh, the word of God was not really the word of God, the spirit um, of you know, everything was resisted and uh, it was literally uh, kept away from the people, kept away from the believers. And in one sense, it had become an organization, right? The church had become an organization, it had become a, a, a you know, it had its own army. It had it. It did become. You know, a, it did become a superpower, but in a in a in a very different way. Right? It was conquering. Way wars were being waged, um, and so on. And the church had become a completely different entity. Right, and so uh, we see that um, the, the church historians call that the Dark Ages. You know, four hundred AD till about thousand four hundred and even beyond uh, AD. Um, church becoming very, very feeble. But we see that even during those times when we read, we see that people were being touched by the Spirit of God. Right? There were people who were, uh, who were responding to the call of God, who were moved by the Spirit of God. And, and despite all the challenges they faced, despite all the um, hardships you know, and all the resistance that they faced, they continue to preach the truth. They continue to live the truth. Okay, so um, we so if, if you get an opportunity, you know you can just just download the book kpcw.org/books, and you can download. Uh, let me just put the link here. I think uh, um, yeah, that's the link, and the title of the book is uh, Revivals. 
rotations and moves a guard. Okay. So you can uh, check that out for a very detailed, it's, it's a good read, right? You can just go through a lot of information though. Uh, so you can um, like go through it. Um, yeah. So anyway, so uh, so when we look at um, uh, you know when we look at churches, we see that uh, right from uh, like 1400s, we see uh, well there are different people and they are you know they are pushing, they are moving like uh, like John uh, the uh, Jan Hus as as he's called, and then Waldo Peter Waldo um, and uh, uh, John Wycliffe. And all these people who before the time of uh, Martin Luther, right? We know we credit Martin Luther for uh, the Reformation, right? And yes, uh, well, he did, you know, nail those 95 theses to the people at Wittenberg in Germany and uh, uh, against the Pope Leo X and the church, uh, really. Um, uh, you know, saying these are the things that are uh, that are uh, that needs to be reformed in the church. These are the ills of the church. These are things that need to be reformed, and uh, and then you know that kind of sparked the whole uh, Reformation movement. But even before that, we see you know, people like Erasmus, people like um, you know Jan Hus, and 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 talking about salvation uh, by grace, salvation by grace through faith, right? So, um, so. So 1500s, you know, we see that uh, there was a restorative move, right? A reformation, a restorative move. You know, if you're following in the notes, I'm in chapter six, which is page 15. Right? So we see the restorative move, uh, restoration brought uh, by the Holy Spirit in raising up people who boldly proclaim the truth of. Uh, you know, uh, of uh, of scripture and bringing back what seemed to be hidden and lost to majority of the church. So there was Bible translation that was happening. So because people thought that yes, you know, there needs to be Bible in their own language. The common pe person should be able to read, and not just the uh, language of the uh, you know language of the of the very educated, which was Latin in those days. So um, you know everything. Um, so there was a lot of persecution for the translation of the Bible. People were uh, people were killed, right? Um, William Tyndale and, and people were killed for doing the work of translation because people did not want um, the uh, the common man to have access to the Word of God. And the reason was, of course, uh, you know, hi uh, hiding the truth and also and also holding on to power. Many, many, many other, many such things, right? So, um, so we see in fifteen hundreds there is a revelation, salvation by grace through faith. The entire teaching of that, you know, I'm not. I need to be born again, and it is, uh, it is something that I can receive by faith, and it is a grace of God. It's not by works because uh, the church had come to a place where it was. Uh, there was a lot of. Um, uh, wrong doctrine, wrong teaching. There was uh, worship of uh, the saints. Uh, uh, there was also um, selling of indulgences, meaning that uh, the ch so the ch it is really funny when you think about it. But then typically this, this is what they did that uh, you know each uh, it, uh, I wish I had a visual with it. Uh, you know the, I, I'd seen one that uh, the church had a list of things, a right, list of sins. Uh, you know, mentioned right? Okay, if it's adultery, if it's this, 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 and it had a cost, just like a hotel menu. It had a cost to it, right? And so you need to pay that money and buy what is called an indulgence, meaning that you can indulge in that sin, you can commit that sin. Uh, but the license to that was actually issued by the church. You know, you see how far the church had come, right? Um, so you pay the money, you buy the license or an indulgence, and then you go ahead and, you know, and commit that sin. So that was called an indulgence. And then, and then of course, after committing the sin, uh, you could come and, uh, you know, get repentance, which was uh, granted by the priest uh, and so on. So it was, it was really messy. Um, and uh, in that, Darkness, spiritual darkness. God raised up you know, people, and and the Holy Spirit brought about that move 
or a restoration of the truth, right, of salvation by grace through faith. So that we see in the 1500s. In the 1600s, um, uh, a very um, uh, very interesting thing of the importance of water baptism. So along with this teaching of uh, you know salvation by works, salvation because of you know trust in this and that, and uh, in in uh, uh, in a system, religious system, um, also you know, infants and the whole act of why was a person baptized was completely distorted. Right? It was not according to scripture. So then uh, you know, there was this uh, group of people called the Anabaptists. Okay? Anabaptists, uh, it typically means re-baptized. Okay, so, uh, so the Anabaptists, uh, their um, belief, it, it was in Zurich, uh, Switzerland. So their, um, uh, what was their stance, you know, was that, uh, again, their emphasis on salvation um, through, by, by grace, through faith, uh, and, and also baptism as a sacrament, as someone who fully understands why they are doing and what they are doing and uh, it's um they also believe that yes uh, you know when when you read the word of god the holy spirit uh, illuminates the the uh, the truth he is the one who leads and so on so, um a lot of you know movements we see that coming out of that but um we because we then we see that um, this restoration of the truth of why we you know what a baptism and uh, so uh, we call it the puritan you know, movement, um, uh, water baptism, consecration, and and also importantly, the separation of the church from the state. You know, like um, you know, we and 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 the understanding of that, um, in the sense, the church had become more like um, a controlling authority. You know, with its own armies and and so on, uh, and was being fought in the name of Christ. Uh, you know, we read about crusades and so on. So uh the the whole understanding of the separation of that right um then in the 1700s we see uh, a revival of holiness sanctification uh, of the church being separated from the world right uh, meaning uh, being in the world but not of the world right being in the world in order to reclaim or redeem the world um, because um, that is what the father does that's the father's uh, mission to uh, restore and to redeem the world um, but to be separate from the ways of the world right so this whole uh, thing of understanding of the holiness of god which was lost during earlier times um, so teaching on that uh, um, and widespread teaching on that, and uh, and uh, and the awe of God, and the reverence uh, of God, of the holiness of God, and so we see the what Church historians again call is a holiness movement, an understanding of sanctification, and uh, and the people of God, the body of Christ, being separate from the from the not conformed to the values, the culture ways of the world, um, but to be separate from that, to be consecrated from that. Right. Uh, then in the 800s, we see another, you know, a resurgence of uh, an, another aspect of God's truth being brought back to the body of Christ, and which is uh, the power of God, right? Uh, the power of God to heal the physical body and the mind. That the fact that um, uh, you know uh, the 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 whole study of God's word is to lead us to the presence of God, and the presence of God uh, in, in the presence of God is the power of God, and um, and the power of God. God, uh, 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 when you know the whole aspect of salvation and atonement, that Isaiah fifty three verses four and five, he carried our sickness, he carried our curse, and by his stripes we are healed, and the fact that salvation is is not just forgiveness but it also is uh, the healing is a big part of it so there was a healing you know divine healing movement to minister the way the lord jesus ministered and to walk in his footsteps so we see the holy spirit bringing back the truth and there were uh, you know many teachers uh, 
that uh, raised up who uh, taught that revelation of uh, divine healing you know and uh, and and we read about that so uh, so divine healing movement then in the 1900s we see um, the revelation of the holy spirit right the holy spirit uh, and the uh, outpouring the baptism of the holy spirit the gifts of the holy spirit the power of the spirit for today's church because there was somehow this understanding that with the days of the apostles um, or the or the twelve apostles and uh, you know it, it, along with the days of the the early church the, the what we see in the book of Acts that somehow everything had ceased like those that kind of uh, evangelism and that kind of move of God the works of God everything had come to an end you know there was that kind of an understanding and um, and therefore there was no living in faith expectation for god to move or even praying you know in in those uh, on those lines so then we see that there was a, a revelation of that there was a teaching of that uh, about holy spirit baptism so yes we are born again when we are uh, believers uh, we are born again when we put our you know uh, faith in christ and we are washed by his blood and the Holy Spirit indwells us. We are sealed by His Spirit, as we see in the Scripture. But also, we uh, the fact that God wants to empower the believer. God wants to pour out His Spirit on the believer. And and what we have been learning so far, you know, the resurgence of that, a restoration of that truth to the body of Christ. So we see that, you know, the Holy Spirit baptism, praying in tongues, uh, and and the other gifts. Well. Praying in tongues was probably, you know, emphasized, highlighted a lot more than the other gifts during this time. But, uh, you know, but the fact that, you know, the gifts are for today, like the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for today. It's for today's church, for, you know, every believer. So we see that truth being restored. Then, you know, from the year 2000 onwards, um, the people who have studied this they see that uh, well following this um is the restoration of uh, uh fivefold ministers the fivefold ministry um gifts to the body of christ you know uh, earlier okay an evangelist or pastor would be uh, well that was a common thing and even in i think today um everyone who's in ministry say they're called in uh, you know nobody's called in uh, you know an evangelist um or you know commonly what we see is pastor you know even though the person may not do actual pastoral ministry the tendency if this you know if anyone is in ministry is called a pastor right um it's there in uh, you know even in our uh, country and you know if you go up north and many places you see that common thing happening but the fivefold ministry the apostle the prophet the evangelist pastor teacher Right. Uh, we see that that was restored to the body of Christ. So there were men and women who were raised up, whom, who uh, we were teaching this truth that the fivefold ministry gift is for today. Right? What we see in Ephesians four and verse eleven. Right? Let me put that verse. Okay, uh, Ephesians four, verses 11, 12. Um, so we uh, read about how. Uh, first of all, the fivefold ministry is uh, listed there, and that is it is for the uh, edification of the body of Christ. It is for the equipping of the saints to do the work of ministry, and so on. Right. So, um, so the uh, identifying that gift, you know, if people uh, and not stifling that in people to uh, allow people to rise up uh, and to 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 be released into that. Right. Uh, so we see that happening, and also. And and uh, in line with that, you know, several things like the prophetic, the apostolic, um, being restored to the body of Christ. Of course, evangelism and the pastoral thing was always there, teaching also. Uh, but predominantly, we see that being brought back. They are being apostles in the workplace, even you know, having carrying an apostolic anointing in the workplace, um, uh, doing the work of ministry you know while being in the workplace and so on so we see that um being restored to the body of christ and then uh, the other thing is uh, very interesting is the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry right um so 
so the common understanding was well the pastor will do the work you know i will support the church i will do the other things you know i will do i will be uh, a help you know, that there's nothing wrong, administrative help to the pastor, I'll be a deacon and so on. But he's the one who's called, you know, because he's left everything and come. So so he'll do the work, the pastoral work, the preaching, teaching, everything. Uh, he will do it. Whereas I will attend the church. Right? I will be faithful in attending the church. Uh, and and this is, this is all that, that I, I am called to do. This is what I will do. So the... Um, Again, Ephesians 4 verses uh, 11 and 12, the, the whole thing of um, uh, saints being raised, saints being equipped, and the whole concept of saints itself, right? Uh, I'm sure you must have studied in in Christ, uh, in the in Christ class that the word saint, it's not a title, right? It just means uh, consecrated ones, the separated ones, which is every believer, right? Separated from something and separated for something or someone right um hagios meaning consecrated one so um so that understanding that every believer is actually a minister of god right every believer is a servant of christ and every believer has a ministry whether it's in the body of christ it's in uh, you know it's whether it's they are called to the what we call as the fivefold ministry, or you know, in any form, right? Uh, what we see a list in Romans twelve, right? We see uh, the fivefold ministry gift mentioned there. We see one Corinthians twelve twenty eight talking about you know giving another list. So we see all this, and we see that the saints are to be equipped for the work of ministry. So that happening, you know that. Um, so teachers, I mean, sorry, churches teaching that, you know, your you're not just called to attend. You have a bigger purpose, right? You might be, uh, you might be a homemaker. You might be a working professional. Uh, you might be a, you know, software engineer, whatever, you know, a doctor. But you have a purpose, a bigger purpose, which is uh, ministry, right? You see your work as as ministry. You see that as because you're coming in contact with people where the even the fivefold full-time, so-called full-time ministers, may not have access to. Right, so um, so that understanding, so uh, workplace professional, business as a mission, uh, and so on, coming back, you know, to the body of Christ, restore restoration of this truth. Okay, so the thing is, um, as believers, you know, we have to contend for that that kind of faith, which was uh, like what we see in Jude uh, verse three, that um, it was given Jude chapter one verse three it was given to the early church that kind of faith and walk in the present truth you know it's very interesting right second peter chapter one and verse 12 so uh, peter makes a reference to that that we will walk in the present truth um let's just read that verse yeah second peter um 112 for this reason i will not be negligent to remind you always of these things though you know and are established in the present truth. So he was talking about the fact that, you know, that even for the believers of that day, uh, the, you know, the, the fact that they needed to be rooted, established in the present truth. Um, you know, we see, uh, when we were looking at Book of Acts, we read about Apollos and how Priscilla and Aquila, you know, how they, they aligned him to the present truth about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. How Paul, when he went to Ephesus, when he spoke to those 12 disciples um, who were there, how he aligned them to the present truth. He prayed, laid hands, prayed over them. They were filled with the Spirit and they prophesied and, and prayed in tongues. We see that, right? So, um, so all that. So the fact is that we as uh, believers, as disciples, followers of Christ, we need to be aligned to the present truth and which the Holy Spirit has restored, has been restoring through the ages and uh, and restored the church uh, to this truth, right? So restored the truth to this church, sorry. Okay, so, so that is something, um, yeah, uh, I have a question. Somebody asked a question. Okay, um, I thought somebody put their hands up, right? Anyway, so um, so any questions so far 
on what we have seen. Um, uh, Pastor, small uh, question. Yes. So, if someone asks, are you Pentecostal, uh, how do we respond? Yeah, so I think we need to ask the question, what do you mean by that? <laughs> you know, because the thing is, that term itself, no, it, people have different understandings of it, understanding of it, uh, based on where they grew up, what they, you know, so you just need to ask, you know, what do you mean by that? You know, uh, do you mean, do I believe in the Spirit, Holy Spirit? Do I believe in the baptism of the Spirit? Yes, I do. Right, so I think that will help clarify. Uh, because, uh, like, I remember a friend of mine, you know, had a similar question, but his understanding was he was coming from a background where, where, um, like, uh, you know, if a person was dedicated to the gospel, it, it was some. It was a. I think it was a kind of a Pentecostal church, but then a different. Uh, I don't know what to call it. A different sect of it. A different group. So where. Um, like even married people who were given for full time ministry, they were living separately. You know, it was like that. Um, they were the church would have living quarters. The men would live separately. Women, something like that. You know, so so if he would ask, you know, are you Pentecostal? He would come from that understanding. So it's better to ask, uh, clarify. You know, what do you really mean by that? And then I think, uh, yeah, I can answer. Um, yeah. So, just in case, while sharing the gospel, you know, people ask, "What denomination are you? Um, mm. How do we introduce?" Respond uh, to that. Yes. Mm. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, I, I guess they would, uh, based on their understanding, you no, know, they they might have an understanding, basic thing of, okay, I'm Catholic. I mean, a Catholic Protestant kind of a thing. Um, so, yeah. So we can say, I go, I. You know, I go to a Bible-believing church, you know, because we, uh, as far as, I'm, I'm just talking as far as APC, uh, we're a non-denominational uh, and also charismatic Bible-believing, uh, emphasis on the Word and Spirit. So, you know, I think it'll be quite a mouthful taking time to explain okay. which <laughs> denomination, <laughs> you know, if someone were to ask me. Um, yeah, but I think uh, I, that's a you know, that's a great opportunity, actually, to talk about uh, some of the deeper things. Um, yeah, to talk about, uh, you know, why why you believe what you believe, actually, to steer the conversation that way. Sure, yeah. Pase. Thanks. Sure, yeah. Okay, so, um, so there's, that's, uh, you know, so we see the, you know, the move of the Spirit. It's interesting that, you know, God never gives up in what we, you know, in today, you know, today's time, I just think, you know, if you just look at it, today, uh, we are talking about, you know, being born again, uh, we are teaching about being born again, we are leading people to Christ, um, today, we are also teaching about, you know, the, the works of the Spirit, uh, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know, teaching people, and leading them in prayer, and having the wonderful, uh, you know, um, opportunity to see them being filled with the spirit and, and praying in tongues and and prophesying and so on and today we have the opportunity to you know go deeper and teach about prayer teach about prophecy teach about you know several things um you know which all these truths right but it wasn't so if you actually look back it wasn't so you know when you study church history and for us um it's really dif difficult to imagine can there be a time you know, was there a time after you know, all that we see uh, in Scripture? Was there a time there where people really forgot about that or did not have that kind of a knowledge? It was commonplace, right? But the thing is, yes, it was that way. And uh, but the Holy Spirit has brought back, right, restored through willing people, through obedient hearts brought back uh, to the body of Christ. And it's wonderful to see that. Okay. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the next chapter, um, which is uh, chapter 7 and uh, page 16. This is the work of the Holy Spirit towards a sinner. Okay. Um, so we are specifically uh, looking at someone who... Um, like who who does not know Christ 
and uh, you know and who was lost in sin um so you know we we could call that person a good person a noble person but who does not have uh, the knowledge of christ and uh, you know the holy spirit draws that person what is the work of that holy spirit towards such a person right um so uh so this is uh, let's let's just read through some of the scriptures and uh, the first thing we see that the, the holy spirit convicts the world you know this is the teaching of the lord jesus um, about the holy spirit in john chapter 16 and he um, he taught you know we looked at that earlier he he taught about three things right um that the holy spirit convicts the world of sin the holy spirit convicts the world of righteousness christ righteousness and also brings a conviction about the judgment okay so uh, these three things he uh, he taught in john chapter 16 and let's read those verses okay verse 8 says and when he is come referring to the holy spirit it says when he is come he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and then he goes on to explain you know, of sin because they do not believe in me of righteousness because i go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of the world is judged um so he makes uh, the statement and then he also goes on to say that uh, um you know in verse 13 of course he is the spirit of truth he will guide you into all truth he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you things to come he will glorify me and he will take what is of mine and declare to you um and so he, he testifies about about the lord jesus he exalts uh, the lord jesus right so we we see that okay so um uh, so first first and foremost uh, you know uh, he convicts the world of sin okay and we also see that um, there is a uh, there is something that the father does right john i think this is a question which uh, divya asked this morning right john 6 and verse 44 um you know no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and i i will raise him up at the last day so the father is uh, you know giving that open invitation the father is drawing uh, each and every person and uh, and the holy spirit convicts okay so what is conviction anyone um what is what is conviction making you realize uh, that uh, we have sinned against god making us okay. feel uh, or a belief okay. yeah okay realization okay um belief can i say strong belief right so it's a yes it's when you say conviction you know it's something that you believe in very strongly that it's uh it's not you know you're, you're not shaken um you're not wavering so the holy spirit brings conviction about sin okay, that something is wrong okay, and that's the work of the holy spirit so uh you know uh feeling guilty okay robert so, yeah robert so the thing is uh you know we feel you know as believers we or you know even as not as believers we feel guilty because we have a sense of right and wrong and we have kind of uh, we are sensitive our values and um you know the, the things that we hold dear uh, we are sensitive to that and when we miss that we feel guilty you know that we have uh, uh, that we have missed that okay but does the holy spirit make us guilty well we don't see uh, because guilt you can feel guilt and stay guilty and not do anything you know about it it need not always lead us to remorse and repentance right um but whereas uh, the work of the holy spirit is to bring in conviction where a strong belief that uh, yes what i'm doing is wrong and the, the need for answers you know how can i come out this and also to and, and and a very strong uh desire to to come out of it right so so that's the thing yeah so yes we feel guilty when we are sin 
when we sin, sorry, uh, you know, as believers, it's it's part of that guilt and shame because we have missed out, and uh, we see that um, guilt, shame, condemnation is is uh, is a is a you know it's a emotion of the flesh. We 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 feel that, and also it's also a work of the enemy when the enemy brings in shame and condemnation and lies, right? Okay. Okay, so we see that he convicts uh, the world of sin. Okay, uh, when we look at Acts chapter two, uh, Acts chapter two and verses thirty-seven, after the, you know, after uh, Peter says, right, he, Peter is filled with the Spirit, and then he stands up, he, he shares the message. We we see this response. Um, now, when they heard this, verse thirty-seven, Acts chapter two, verse thirty-seven. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart okay so something pierced them they were cut to the heart and said to peter and the rest of the apostles brethren men and brethren what shall we do okay we, i know we need to do something what shall we do okay um looking for steps to come out of that what shall we do so uh, you know that is that is the work of the holy spirit he was present there, and he, uh, and then Peter goes on to say, "Repent, change, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Christ." And they and they follow through. He also gives instruction about the Holy Spirit and so on. Right. So uh, convicts the world of sin. He also convicts the world of Christ's righteousness. Right. The righteousness of Christ. He uh, brings an understanding and a conviction about uh, about Christ about the righteousness of Christ specifically. You know, that's what we read about righteousness. Convicts the world of righteousness. And uh, we can always also say that he convicts the world of, you know, what is what is actually right um, and uh, what is wrong. Uh, so what is right, you know, that, that, that standard of righteousness says, because I go to my father and you see me no more. And convicts the world of, of judgment, of things to come. The consequence of their actions. Now, now we might say, okay, uh, you know, the person is just going free. They are not, you know, aware of it at all, and you know, they're just enjoying the, you know, being in sin, having a sinful lifestyle, walking in rebellion. Yeah, that may be so. That is the typical condition of someone who has turned their back on God, or someone who is ignorant of God. Right. But when the Holy Spirit um, ministers, you know, this is how he ministers. He brings an understanding and conviction, like to the sinner, uh, and uh, about about sin, about righteousness, the right standard, and also the righteousness of Christ, and the the judgment, the consequence of the action. And uh, he brings that conviction. And and the thing is, yes, um, you know, uh, he does that. The Holy Spirit does that through human agents, or he could do that sovereignly also, right? He, uh, he he does that through you and I, you know, when we go and share, uh, share the gospel and share your testimony and uh, um, share the truth that is in, in, in scripture. And the Holy Spirit brings that conviction in the hearts of people, right? And, and knowing that I need to change, there needs to be change. Uh, something has to change. and. Uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, if we look at your own lives, um, the Holy Spirit brought conviction in, in you know, in different ways uh, or through different people, or maybe, you know, even sovereignly, right? Uh, maybe you had an encounter with God and uh, human beings were not involved in the sense visibly. Maybe they were praying and uh, just like, you know, how Saul on the way to Damascus had an encounter and uh, he falls off, the horse that he's uh, traveling on, and uh, hears the voice. He has an encounter, and uh, and then you see his response. You know, uh, you know when did I when did I do this? And and the Lord you know, has the conversation with him, and and we see that something has changed in him. Right? He something has changed in him, um, and and when Ananias actually goes and meets Saul. He says, you know, Brother Saul, Lord has told me this. So, you know, he had already changed. The Lord had already spoken to him. 
this person will come he's going to pray and you will receive your sight and and uh, and so many other things right uh, so so we see that the holy spirit does that okay um so which is uh, for us it is again something very very reassuring um also something that is liberating knowing that god will use us maybe to present reasons maybe to maybe to present the truth the evidence um and so on and he will you know uh, and as we prepare ourselves by studying the word by by meditating by you know receiving from him uh, maybe a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom or a prophetic word and and a word in season right um to share to the person he might use all of that uh, but the the work of conviction is by the holy spirit so that's where that's really pressure off you know saying that okay i will deliver right i will go i'll i'll deliver it in the best way possible um making sure that it's clear and, and so on i will engage with the person uh but ultimately the work of conviction the work of transformation the holy spirit will do right so that takes a lot of low, uh, pressure off right so we can we can rest easy and say you know and we don't have to do the work of the holy spirit right um and he will do it right he will he will do the work of cleansing he will do the work of uh, convincing he'll do the work of uh, convicting so um, so that's that's his that's what he does best that's what god does what the holy spirit does okay the holy spirit testifies of jesus you know that's the other thing that we saw um john 15 verse 26 um the holy spirit testifies when the helper comes whom i shall send to you from the father the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father he will testify of me so the holy spirit you know uh, in um, the next chapter we, we saw that he will exalt he will glorify me the lord jesus says so he will exalt jesus he will put the spotlight on the lord jesus on the person of jesus he will testify of jesus bring evidence about jesus the reality of the lord right he will testify and say this is he who this is who he is yeah, and and bring uh, convincing uh, reasons uh, to testify to, to point to jesus and to elevate and exalt jesus right um, in in we when we see uh acts chapter 5 uh acts chapter 5 and verse 32 excuse me um so we see um um yeah so let's just read from verse 29 onwards peter and the other apostles answered and said we ought to obey god rather than men the god of our fathers raised up jesus whom you murdered by hanging on a tree him god has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sins and we are his witnesses to these things and so also is the holy spirit whom god has given to those who obey him right so um so he's saying you know we are witnesses to these things the holy spirit is witnesses to these things so the holy spirit is given to those who obey him and then the witness testifies right the holy spirit being witness to these things testifies the holy spirit is god because he knows all things and uh, here specifically the scripture talks about how he he's the witness of all things and uh, he he will he does the work of testifying okay um 1 corinthians 12 says no one can say that jesus is lord except by the holy spirit right um says uh while talking about again he's, he's talking about gifts he's talking about uh, you know the idols that were there in the land and he's saying therefore i make known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of god calls jesus accursed and no one can say that jesus is lord except by the holy spirit to to really say that jesus is lord now that's the work of conviction and that's the work of testi testi um, testifying and witnessing that the holy spirit brings about and so the person is able to say yes jesus is lord okay so um so so this is something that we see as the ministry of the holy spirit towards a person who's ignorant who is uh, you know who's rebellious who's turned his way 
uh, away from God, okay, who's a sinner. Okay, so we'll stop here and then we'll take a break and we'll come back. Right? Thank you.